Hello everyone and welcome to the Lego Ideas Medieval Blacksmith. Now this is set number 21325, however out of the Lego Ideas sets this is number 33. Now we do get ourselves four minifigures in the set including one dog, which is pretty nice. It's a pretty fair amount of minifigures for a blacksmith. Now some would beg to differ as this set has now gone from $150 to $180 as of the recent August price hikes. However, you still do get 2,164 pieces, which is still a pretty good deal uh, for $180. It might be a little bit less ideal for, for some people nowadays. However, this is a collector set rated for ages 18 and up. However, as I've seen, there's definitely some play features that some people may make use of. So. The building itself is absolutely gorgeous, and if you're looking for a building that might fit into a medieval city, this is definitely one of those for you because it just looks very nice. Now, I will say the one unfortunate part is this tree. I'm not saying that the tree looks bad, however, if you're trying to build the tree, it is a bit of a hassle. That's the only thing that I'd say is a bit of a downside, but once you have that tree in there, it just looks really good and ties everything together. So bit unfortunate to build the tree, but once it's there, it just ties everything together. So that's the one thing that I will leave you with. Now we also do get a cart, which we will get to first, which is surprisingly the last thing you build. You know, it kind of delays that for you so that you get a little bit of a cart action at the end. Now we will take a deep dive of everything later. However, we do get some action of the furnace there with the light bricks. There's a bit of glare. So hopefully you can still see it. Now we do get a section of the dining table there and also a section of the bedroom. However, we will get into all the detail about those later on. We can also get a glimpse of the garden there, which is next to the actual furnace that you're going to be smelting all of your tools with. With your anvil there and you've also got your knights there coming in to get some of those fresh weapons that you've just made. Now there's definitely a lot of stuff that you can do with this set. Or you can kind of just sit back, relax in your cottage home, kind of just sit there looking at it, you know, having a good time, you know, having your day to day and just doing what you want. But You know, enough of that talking, let's get into the set itself. Because, well, just look at this build. Now, this build right here is just absolutely fantastic. You've got yourself some side windows, you've got yourself some great roofing there you've got yourself a nice color palette there with the white and then the tan bricks and just everything just comes together with this build you've got some windows there to look out and it feels really fleshed out the base plate over here in this specific section does feel a little bit lacking uh, but this is probably not the side that you're going to be reviewing it from uh, the only unfortunate thing is some of these might get out of place because they're not fully supported but it shouldn't be that difficult to really fix anything up if you run into any problems. So, without further ado, let's jump into the minifigures which have hidden themselves inside the blacksmith. Now, the one animal that we do get, like, kind of as an official minifigure here, it's not a minifigure, but it is a very lovely looking husky here, which is in a gray and white pattern. Now, if you've ever wanted a husky, this is probably not the cheapest set to get one. However, it is nice to get a little bit of a furry companion here. It's going to kind of help you go through all of your blacksmithing days. You know, you can take your hunter out there and go ahead and do some exploring and hunt with your dog. Or you can kind of do some at-home work here with the blacksmith, just kind of smithing away at those tools with your little dog friend. Our second minifigure is going to be our expert huntress which is going to be both using that apple tray to test her aim, but also hunting to get all the various supplies that these two might need to survive in their blacksmith, because they can't live off blades alone. So this is going to be one of the big providers food-wise, because they're going to be using the forest to kind of scour for the various ingredients that they might need. And of course, they do have some great detailing. For one, they do have some double molded legs there with some brown boots and some dark tan pants. Now, they do have a bit of a green tunic there with a little bit of string to kind of tie it together so it doesn't fall apart with some white undershirt there, which you can see through the sleeves and a little bit towards the neck area of the minifigure. Now, they do have a bow and quiver, quiver being on their back, bow being in their hand, and they are a bit 
happy because they have just recently come back from a big hunt where they got a bunch of deer and also a few rabbits, unfortunately. Now this person, let's just say, isn't going to be doing too much harm to them, but uh, they are definitely going to be a necessary component for the blacksmith here. Now they do have some hair there, which you can put like a feather in or a crown if you have one. However, this set doesn't really come with any of those. So, well, actually, no, because there is a quill. So you can put the, give them a blue feather if you do so wish. But over on the back, you can see those braids that are on the hair and also that quiver, which does have a few straps and some arrows just left over after that hunting trip. The back of the tunic is unfortunately not too special, uh, but there is a quiver covering it up, so it does make a little bit of sense. And you can also see them uh, closing one eye to get a little bit of a better aim there at their target, which is pretty nice. You know, dual face for a lot of creative action. Now, the Huntress was a cool minifigure. However, I feel like most people are going to be excited about the blacksmith himself as this is a blacksmith, so you're probably going to take a lot of interest in the blacksmith himself. Now, they do have a little bit of special legs where you can see that they have some darker blue pants. It's not quite navy, but it's almost there. It's kind of a mix between a navy and a light blue with a bit of a black apron there, which does have a bit more of a studded look towards the top where you can kind of see the fabric of the pouch being held together with kind of these straps also being tied together so that they do get like an apron look. Now they do have a dark tan undershirt there with a hammer in their hand with a very large beard there in ginger as well as some ginger hair. Now we can't really quite tell what their expression is right now. However, they do have their eyebrows raised. So they are either pretty happy of the blade that they've just made or they're in shock that something is not right. But taking off the beard, we do get a light bearded look there with a little bit of a button there on the dark tan shirt. Now, we do in fact learn that they were pretty happy with their successes as a blacksmith and also that they've successfully given themselves a ponytail for the day. Now on the back of the torso, which we'll get a little bit of a better look at in a little bit, uh, they do have a cross pattern for that little apron that they have there. But they also have their full concentration mode, tongue sticking out, you know, really making sure that the blades that they're crafting are in pristine condition, their helmets can't be cut through, and that their torso plates there for their shoulder pads are in top-notch quality. The problem is, you can't really run a blacksmith without anybody to give your items to, which is why this here knight, or set of knights, come in very handy because they are the ones that are going to be bringing about the money or currency to bring about and help sustain the blacksmith so that they can get more weapons and armors for their need whatever that may be is it a war that they're fighting is it a defense that they're planning is it an attack that they're forming who knows but either way they look very good now they do have some gunmetal gray armor there but in front of the armor, we do see a little bit of a large shirt there with a bit of flowiness. Now, they do have a belt, both of them, as both of these have the same uh, torso and leg printing. Uh, but they do have a big shield, and you might be wondering whose crest that is. Well, that is the Black Falcon crest here, and you can see them in three sets currently. That is the this one right here, the Medieval Blacksmith, the $100 castle that was released for the Creator 3-in-1 series, and also the large castle, the Lion Knight's castle, where they're also making a healthy appearance, trying to do some traits, who knows? Uh, but they do look very good there with that falcon there, both in black and silver. Now they do also have this neck collar piece, which is a little bit of a bit more shine to it. It is looks like a bit more of a yellow gold color, but I doubt that it's actual gold. Now they do have two different shoulder pads on the right here with our female warrior here, female knight, we have a dual shoulder pad look, you know, going for that extra shoulder protection, making sure that both sides are well protected. They do have a bit of a happy expression there with a nice headband to boot with some flowing hair, which is trimmed as to not cause any problems in the battlefield. Now on our left side, we do have a bit of an aged uh, knight there, probably a little bit more experienced due to their age. But who knows? Uh, they only have a single shoulder pad. One was maybe lost to a fight. 
or maybe they just wanted a single side of extra protection because that right side right shoulder looks pretty heavily guarded if i do say so myself now there is a little bit of difference on the back however they do have a little bit of a gray beard and a gray side flowing hair and generally they're a bit more stern they don't really have too much of a expression going on they're just happy to be here now the downside with these prints is that there isn't really anything on the back there's a little bit of fabric lines but not much else now the downside of the a uh, knight on her right is that she doesn't really have any back protection. Unfortunately, if she gets hit from the behind, a backstab is going to be pretty lethal. But our older gentleman here has thought about it. He's his left side pretty undefended, so that's probably his weak point. But he does have some back armor there to maybe protect him. Now they do come with some shields, so they do have that. But uh, our guy on the left here is going to have a little bit better time if he gets stabbed in the back. Now underneath their heads, which do have a little bit of uh, dual layering for the head where you can see a bit of a difference between the hair there and also a bit of a difference between there. So these headpieces are very well detailed, but they have nothing to reveal once taken off, which is a bit unfortunate, but hey, we still got a good amount of detail in the front. So the back is a little bit lackluster, but uh, unless you're a stealthy assassin, you probably won't be seeing that side of them anyway. But that's it for our minifigures, so let's continue on with the builds themselves. Now I have taken a lovely volunteer here to help us discover and locate everything that's inside here. Now we do have a large pole arm in there, which is very nice here, which is her weapon of choice. You're getting a lot of range, which is probably going to be helpful considering they want as much distance as possible with their light armor. Now we don't have any heavily armored units here, uh, but they do have a little bit of range. Now, the card itself is pretty nice. We'll get to the rest of the contents inside in a little bit, but they do have a bit of a lantern and that Falcon Knight's shield on the side there. It is a little bit crooked, uh, so you may need to fix that from time to time, but still, it does look very good. Now, our horse here may tend to fall over, but they look very good in this tan coloring. They also do have their attachment there so that they can pull this cart along. Now, the cart does have equal sized wheels, and it's going to help you with a little bit of storage. Now, you can put both of your knights on here, which is going to be good. So, you can have them kind of sitting there, guarding along, and just kind of heading in the direction that they need to, with this faithful steed pulling them to their destination. Now, inside, of course, we already mentioned the pole arm here with the axe head and the spear, but we also get two helmets, an extra shield, the other one which you can take off from the cart itself, a bag of money, and also a little bit of a tan piece to put on your horse if you just want to have it detached from the cart. Or you can detach both of those pieces and just have someone riding the horse into battle if you do so choose. So there's a lot of uh, little utility in this cart, and it does have a decent amount of storage, which is very good so you can fit some prisoners in there, uh, as people that may have seen the Emperor's Casino videos, or just kind of do what you want with it. You know, there's a lot of storage. And there's also a lot of things that you can put in there. You can go to your blacksmith and you can pick up a bunch of weapons and armor in there as well. So there's a lot of things that you can fit in this cart. So it's good and handy to have, especially in a set like this where you want to make lots of transactions and produce a bunch of weapons for your armor. Not armor, but knight. I don't know why I was thinking armor. Well, there is some very splendid armor, which we'll get to in a little bit because that's our next step. Now, the extra lights do add a bit of fuzz, so I am going to turn them off for this section of the review. I hope you can understand, but it does look a bit better this way. Now, we do get a little bit of plant life next to these stairs here with some wooden beams, which we will see in action a bit later, but that's where you put the other floors. As you can see, there's a bit of a top missing, but if we move on, we can see a little bit of a wood pile section there where you can kind of go ahead and put your wood there or take it off if you need to burn the fireplace up above. Now over here, we do have a bit of a well where you can take your bucket, grab some water and either use it for drinking or go ahead and take it back to your blacksmith and put it in the little water bath there to make sure that all your weapons are 
nice and well made because you do need a bit of fire and a bit of water so that you can kind of heat up your plates and also cool them off later. Now this apple tree is a little bit of annoying to make, still a fun building process nonetheless, but what I'm really referring to is making sure that when you place it, that all these leaves are kind of in place so that they look good on the tree. It is a bit hard to get that right, and I'm not too sure if I even got it right. So there is that. Now, of course, there is a bit of a target on the back of this tree, and the tree itself looks decently good with all the colorations that it has. Now, moving a little bit on, we can see that wood pile again from a different angle with this window right here. It is a bit dark there, and there's not too much hiding in there. Maybe some dark secrets, maybe a spider, who really knows? But there's nothing else to my knowledge. Now we can open this here window, which it is open for the time being, so that we can have a glimpse into the workshop or just give the workshop a bit of fresh air because it does get a bit dusty there once in a while. You know, you've been hammering away for a few hours, definitely gets to you. Now over here, we do have our dog friend returning once again, eating out that bone that we have there. But in the center here, we do have a bit of a pumpkin patch with a bit of pumpkins there. These could be extra pumpkins or just some flowers, who knows, but regardless, we do have a nice little garden there. Now, if we go ahead and look at the furnace area here, we do have this little extension here. You might be wondering what that does. Well, bam, we've heated up the furnace and we're ready to cook some blades there. Now, of course, you can just turn that off and have it there for display, or if you want to add a bit of functionality, you can push it in and just have it constantly burning. That is also going to burn through your wallet because of batteries, but hey, you can do that if you want to. Now, Blacksmith has gotten a bit tired here hammering away at these weapons and just working slowly on making the weapons that might be needed for the armed forces there. The Falcon Knights are on their way and they don't want to wait. They've got money to spend and they want to spend it now. Moving inside, we can see the doorway here, which can be closed. It does have a bit of wooden prints there, which is pretty nice, but we do have a broom, a shovel, and also a hammer on the wall there. Some extra tools that the blacksmith might need. Now there are some extra tool rods there so that you can make some extra hammers or weapons, just in case the one that you're currently using breaks, or because you're ready to make another ore and you need some more spears handy. Now we do have a bit of a table here which does have a frying pan and a pot probably used for those extra materials or just for cooking, who knows. But we do also have a little bit of a mannequin there holding up one of the helmets the blacksmith has generously created with a crate of metals there on the side, you know, some extra materials that the blacksmith will need when he eventually runs out of his current stock. Now we do have another shield because the blacksmith is working for the Falcon Knights, as can be seen here, or maybe they're playing two sides of the war, but we didn't want to quite spoil the Lion Knight's castle yet, so we decided to just do the Falcon Knight's shield. But hey, we also have some of those smaller armor pieces there, probably because those ones don't have the plate in the back, which, make, which would make it a little bit more difficult to place those on the rack. Now we do also have a grindstone there to make sure that all the weapons and armor are sharp as ever, and also a little bit of extra coals there to kind of make sure that the flame is kindled to perfection. Now we also do have another blacksmith here, probably for anvil, sorry, to make sure that all the metals are ready for crafting and smelting. So, a lot to take in there, but let's take our way up the stairs to our first living space. Now, we do also get this part of the chimney, which does have the sign for the blacksmith, which looks very nice, but apart from that, the only thing that this floor really adds is the side balcony here for the little supports that we saw earlier, creating this nice little balcony area here, leading up, where if we open the door, we can get ourselves access into the main dining room. The unfortunate part is that this candle may burn the door down, so we're going to want to keep that closed, but we do get a little bit of fun stuff there. We do have a keg of beer or wine there, just in storage, a little bit out of the way, but if you're thirsty, we've got that, but we also have a bit of a chopping board here uh, with some utensils, a frying pan, and a bit of a cleaver to chop some carrots, get ready for some soup. We've got a butter churner there in the corner so that you can churn some butter if you must. We've got a little bit of a salad cooking pot and also a, some kind of soup there, probably with those carrots that we saw on the chopping block, and also a little bit of wood, which might be a little bit harder to see 
in the furnace there cooking away so that everything can be nice and hot and ready to eat. Now we do have a little bit of salad and some chicken on the table here just so that everybody can be well fed. Now this is a little bit of a smaller room uh, given the fact that part of it is taken up by the little staircase but then again uh, not that staircase, sorry, I meant this staircase. We do have this staircase in the way. And we also don't have the outside area, which did take up a bunch of space on the lower floor. But we also do have these nice chairs and this table here. So overall, a nice little room inclusion with some candles so it's well lit. And you can definitely have a good time eating here and cooking if you do so choose. But we have one more room to go. The roof does look nice, but taking it off, we can see... A few things. For one, we can see this nice bed here, which is going to be a good space for anybody to sleep. We are going to put our blacksmith there. He's very tired after a long day's work, but he's going to get kicked off because the huntress has just come back with an even uh, more bountiful harvest. So they're going to take the bed. Whoever wants it can have it. They probably do need to take shifts because it is a quite a small bed now. It does have a bit of a pillow there. And also a nice quilt pattern there with some green and some blues. Now we do have a bear rug, which does look very nice. Some people might be disappointed that there's a bear and dead, but that just shows the skill of the huntress here. Now we also have a bit of a writing area here with that quilt that I mentioned earlier. So you can have a little bit of story time if you do so choose. Now, you might think it is pretty dark in here. And you will be right because the other side is far harder to remove because you have to go, uh, you have to angle it up, first of all, and then you have to try and take it out. So it is very hard because of the way that this is designed so that it clips over the roof. But nonetheless, you can see a better look of that candle stand. And if we take this out, uh, we can get a little bit of a better glimpse into what's in the chest, which is gonna be two compasses and a backpack for those extra travels. Now. It is a bit of a small interior, I must say, for a building of this size. But the sheer size of the building and the detail of the building itself kind of make up for it. And you do have a bit of a dollhouse area of play up at the top. The bottom areas you do need to kind of separate. But you do have a lot of playability action with this blacksmith. And you also have a lot of good display action. So on both fronts, it's just an absolute masterpiece with a bunch of just fun stuff that you can do with it. And in my opinion, this is just an absolutely fantastic Lego idea set. If you want a cottage, this is very good. If you want yourself a blacksmith, this is very good. So realistically, there's so much that you can do with this that it just makes it an overall well-rounded set that has so much potential, no matter who's really getting it. So that's kind of the beauty in this set. But I think you've heard enough of me talking about this thing. So I do hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye. Now, if you did manage to get to this part of the video, I want to leave you off with a little bit of a funny thing, where the fact that you can't actually fit any of the minifigures through the doors, which is a bit of a funny thing. And definitely one that you can get around by crouching everybody down until they're basically crawling like a crab. So there's that. Uh, the dog can fit just fine, so I guess this is a doghouse now.